Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. I need somebody to read for me. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in in whose land you are living. But as for me my, and my house, and my household, we will serve the Lord. Thank you. That's good, right? There. And so God was saying, I'm preparing you. I'm trying to get you ready. I'm giving you an instruction on how to do it. I need you to understand, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, like that phrase is for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. I've seen it as a bumper sticker. Mm -hmm. And it's really good because it, it says the whole thing. In the end, I can advise you. I can give you, I can give you the, 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 the uh, wise counsel. But in the end, I can't do for you what you need to do for God. I only have control over me and my house. And so that's what Josh, Josh was basically saying. This is what you, you got to serve the Lord and fear him. And, and, and all of it's the same. You know, as you deal with the community of believers. I can come on Wednesday and teach and teach and teach. I can get up in the pulpit on Sunday and preach and preach and preach. But in the end, it's a personal decision that you're going to have to make. And, but, I, but I think one thing we need to really catch a hold of here. He didn't say, ask for me. He said, ask for me. See, sometimes we, 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 we don't take that responsibility. We, 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 we release that responsibility and say, well, this child, you know, I, I, I can't tell this child what to do. They got that. No, you living in my house. Ask for me. Joshua, he started talking about, he said, I can't control it. We have responsibility for our household. Whether we want to claim that responsibility or not. You have a lot of parents that say, I mean, we see it all the day. We see it today. I can't, I can't tell this child what to do. The child has his or her own mind. This child won't listen to me. Blah, 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 blah. If you're in a situation, and I, I, don't, I, really, I don't really care about stepping on toes because I'm right in the scripture. If, 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 if you're in a situation to where you are allowing a child to dictate what they will and will not do. You are not controlling that household. I know the world that we live in now want to give them their own mind and own this and own that. No, because, I, yeah, you want your child to develop and mature and all this kind of stuff, but there has to be... That, that as long as that child is a, a minor, that child, your child, your child is under 18 years old, is not going to be, be held responsible for a contract. That's why they won't even let them sign up for credit card. Because the law won't hold them responsible because they are your child. It's your responsibility. You, you know, and, 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 and um, Marion County, your child doesn't go to school. Guess who gets to go see the judge? The parent goes and sees the judge. Huh? St. John's County, the same way? Okay, we, we must not be enforcing it. I have no parents that's been taken to court. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But, but, but the responsibility. Huh? But the, resp the responsibility. You brought this child into the world. You have a responsibility to train and nurture this child. And if you've made a mistake early on and, and you let the, allow this child, you didn't do your part, and now this child is 12, 13 year, years old and it's hard, that's no excuse. You got to go back and, and pray to God that he can restore the years. You know, that the canker worm. You got to pray to God to restore to you. You just can't release it. 
if that child is in your house and God has placed that child in your life and given you the responsibility to rear that child, the Bible says, train a child up in the way. We have the responsibility to train. Anybody ever trained up? Anything trained an animal, maybe the body trained, the, the house trained an animal. When you train, you don't always allow them to do what they want to do. You train and teach them the proper way to do things. And a child is a child has that title for a reason. They don't have all the answers. They are just like, just like, just like they, they don't they don't have all the answers, and, and God has placed them in the hands of responsible adults that will hopefully train them. The reason our society is, is, is so weird today is because we have people that are not even adults yet that, that then get the responsibility of having to train, and it's hard. How are you going to train? You're still a child. And then you're trying to, to train a child. You know, just imagine, you know, you can, you can go down and see how many 16, 17-year-olds we see pushing baby carriages trying to raise a child, but they're still a child. Huh? That's, that's, that's hard. But we're living in a society that, oh, I mean, you look on Facebook, and these little girls, 14, 15 years old, are proud that they're pregnant. Their friends are supporting them. Yes, yes, you know, you're against the world. We're going to support you. Da, 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 da. I'm not saying you, you, you take them in time to the stake and burn them, but you don't promote those kind of, you don't, those, that's a mistake. That, that's a mistake. I heard a comedian say that if you have a 30-year-old, a, a 30-year-old, did they say grandma? You got a 30-year-old grandmother, that means two serious mistakes was made. All right? And we have to understand, we, it can't become norm to where it's acceptable because you're going to start affecting the culture. They're not, they're not spiritually and, 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 and with, they're not mature enough to take on the responsibility of a parent because Joshua is real clear in here. When you have a household that you're responsible for, you have the responsibility to guide this household in the way of God. And if, you, and if, and if you're not there yet, you know, it's going to be hard to do that. So Joshua eventually came in here and said, I'm giving you all this good and wise counsel, but in the end, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I, 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 can't, I can't tell you what anybody, but this is, this is what me and my house is going to do. All right, yes, sir. Brother Adam, did I see your hand a little while ago? Okay. So tell me what you think about that right there, because I know y'all believe in rights and all that kind of stuff, you know, your ch child, children got rights, and I'm going to be honest with you, if my child, my daughter made me mad one time, I took her door off for him, and she had to go until, until she could get my trust again, she had to live in the room, when she had to change clothes, she went to the bathroom, and she had to earn the right to have a door back on her, on her hand. She had to understand. They didn't have an opportunity to, 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 well, I think I'll go to church this morning. I think, oh, no, you're going to go to church every time. When, when, when it's time to go, you're going. They play sports, my daughter, my son, and and and, and, and they play sports. I went to the, it didn't matter if they were playing in, uh, in Miami. I went with them on Saturday night to the game. I followed the team to the game. And then when the team got ready to leave and go stay in the hotel Saturday night, Mine got in the car with me, and we came to wherever I was pastoring, and we was in church on Sunday morning because that was a part of their training. I didn't even allow their sports to, 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 to trump the things of God. And so, and so as much as, and both of them did real well, Jamal's more artistic, uh, and so he loved, he get to play drums in church. But the other ones, when they played sports on Saturday nights, I went to that game, and the rest of them stayed with the team. But I took my children, and sometimes my children would bring their teammates. And they would bring their teammates. When Kira was here, there a few times we all saw her teammates come because she, because she knew she had to go, go, go to wherever I was pastoring or, or he knew. And sometimes they would just bring their teammates along. But those were the rules. Your coach don't get to trump that. Nobody trumps that. This is my house. And as for me and my house, this is what we're going to do. And, and today I can say that, 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 that all of them, did well, went to college, still in college, are doing good. 
But we have to have that kind of commitment not to let the world put pressure on us to, to give them all of these rights. You got a right to eat. You got a right to go to school. You got a right to do what I tell you to do. That, 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 that point, point blank. Because when, 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 we, when, when we don't do it God's way and then they end up wayward or getting in trouble, then everybody looks at us and points the pain. Okay, I tried it your way. I didn't. I, I, I didn't spare the rod. I, 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 I tried it your way. I spared the rod, and I, I, I gave them all these rights and let them do what they want to do, and and, and 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 let them talk back and all that. I, I tried it your way, and I have this wayward child that's going, that's in the prison system and doing this and doing that, and and, and now you point the finger at me, saying I'm a bad parent. Well, guess what? I'm gonna, I'm not gonna give you a right to say, say I'm a bad parent. And, uh, and and so and so I think that's on us as a parent to to to, to have authority over our household. Okay, I know I stir up stir up one in this. Who wanna who wanna go? Kenny? Okay, after you've trained them up in the household, right, then they go away with it. Well, I think if you train them right, they don't come back. Well if you put it in them, yeah. my mom and dad did the perfect thing. My mom and dad put it in me. I didn't have those kind of choices of I don't think I'll go to church this morning. No, they said, Ron, get up. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna do this. I don't or I think I wanna stay out at the dog. I was in the 11th grade trying to get home before dog. You know, and, and, and I'd be outside playing football with my friends in 11th grade. But when the street lights come on, that was the sign. When the street lights come on, that means you go in. All right? And so I'm in 11th grade. I got little seventh grade friends laughing at me because I got to go inside, but they can stay in the street in place. Okay? They put it in me the right way. And then when I went off to college, I ran like a wild dog. But when I got tired of running, I had something inside me to draw on. And then I was able, but, but if it wasn't in me, there's a lot of folk that's out there that's lost, but they don't have anything inside of the drone. That's the difference right there. Now, when, once they get out your house and they decide to run wild, but at least you put in them something to draw on so when they get tired of running, just like a dog. You ever had a dog that you had tired of? Okay, and, 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 and you, let him, you, you let him out, and then he just run all around the neighborhood. When he get tired of running, at least he know how to come back home because he had a home to, to spend time in. All right, and so and so, all, your, our responsibility, as long as they're in our house, to put it in, put it in, put it in, and then if they decide to go away with when they get out there, and that's like everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people do that. A lot of people have prodigal son experiences. If they decide to go away with, at least they have something to draw on when they finally come to themselves, to where so they don't get out there and just give up or commit suicide or keep going further and further and further. They have something that's in them. When I was out there, it doesn't matter. I could be I could be smoking or drinking, but it was always something in my ear saying, "You know better than this," you know. And, and so one day you get tired of that thing talking to you and go ahead and listen to it because my mom and daddy put it in me. Well, yeah, we, go ahead. Y'all well, pray for me because y'all asked the way down. Put it in them already. You know, and I was hard. Yeah, listen, I was hard. <laughs> and my, my, he talked. He called my dad. Uh huh. He, he was like, hey, "Granddaddy, he just he just doing he just doing he's so going to do so well." And my daddy called me. He said, you, know, you got to be, you be a little soft on him now. Cause you know me, I'm military on him. Mm -hmm. I took the door off too. And he's 20 years old, I don't care, he's been mine. But I just started smacking up on him. Y'all pray for him, you pray for him, that he come on back. You got it? <laughs> that's what, that's what get it. If it's in him, oh, yeah. you can't, some people just gonna run. Mm -hmm. But as long as they have something in them oh, yeah. to draw on. But when there's nothing in them, that's the dangerous part because there's no telling yeah. how far they will go. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, and so often you sit, you see parents. They want to start parenting when the child becomes a teenager. Oh, you know, when, when, and that, that makes it more difficult to try to rein a child in when they've had free reign for so long. And I remember my kids were in school at interim. If they got a C at four and a half weeks, for four and a half weeks, you'd have them any practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, that no TV, no games, no nothing for four and a half weeks. All you can do is come in your room and get your book and read. Mm -hmm. But that was the extent of it. And after my daughter, like my youngest, when she went away to school, one of her friends told her, you know, I wouldn't want to grow up in your house. She said, because you all didn't have a choice about whether you were going to school. Your mama told you you were going to school, and that was the end of it. 
you know, that you know, you all were real hard. I said, well, do you think I was real hard? She said, well, Mom, I'm not saying this was a bad thing. She said, I thank God that you were the way you were because it made a difference in the direction that we went in. And now the people that we have to pray with, some of us may, some of us might have made mistakes in our early parenting years. And then those early, while we were still trying to figure out, figure out ourselves because maybe we weren't quite ready to be a parent, but we made decisions and we were, okay? And then, like you say, when you get 12, 13, 14, you know, years old, even sometimes, even nine, okay, now I finally figured it out. And so now I'm trying to do it. This is the piece right here that some of y'all might not understand. And it's crazy, I know, but we have to understand. There are some parents of 11 and 12 year olds, and, and like I say, some of my numbers, but it, we sit out here and say, you tell that child what to do, but in reality, they can't. They, 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 I, I talked to a sister, I used to pastor her mother um, at another church, and she called, got this sweet little cute little girl, she was a little baby when I, when I was back, and, and she would tell me stories, and I see it in West in, 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 in St. Augustine. Sometimes a parent lose so much respect from a child. And not that the child don't love you, but because of what they saw you do, they don't respect you enough to listen. They'll listen to somebody else before they listen to you. And so I might be able to go up to that child and say, do this or do that, and that child will do it. But when that parent does it, that child will cuss that parent out. And then, but I, I got to try to understand on my side, it, ain't, it, it might not be as easy as I think it is. I'm going to have to help this parent. We got to pray with this parent. We got to pray with this parent to recover the respect that maybe that parent should have, but don't have. And so it's not always as easy from the outside looking in and say, well, you just do this, or you just do that. I was sitting in a meeting earlier today, and they were saying, there's a little group of kids over in West Augustine um, that, 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 um, that literally walk, walking down that street that are, that are literally, they, they kind of terrorize folk. And then if you say something to them, you know, they'll kind of let you know your house next to your face. And, and so we got to understand that every house is not like our house. And some houses might have got out of control because the right, the right guidelines or the right training was not in place. And so we can't automatically judge that parent that's finally got it right that's trying to do it. We got to pray with that parent and, and, and pray for God to restore that, re restore that, 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 that has been damaged in that relationship and it's not always just something wrong with you parent or uh, why can't you get control it's not always as easy to get control when you've lost control did I, did I say you ain't okay yeah and what I've been noticing too the parents want to be the children's friend mm -hmm. yeah. 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 that's where a lot of the problems are coming in at because when they get ready to discipline them your friend, you smoke weed with them, you drink mm -hmm. with them, you party with them. Yeah. So now they become your friend, so they've lost all respect for you. Right, right. And, 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 and it's hard to go back. And so, as the body of Christ, we have to help parents that are in that place. We can't sit back and judge them and say they need to have better control. They need to do this. They need to do that. You know, we gotta, we got, we gotta step back and understand that's a different household. And yes, it should have been this way. But it wasn't that way. But now this parent is trying to do it the way that the Bible said. And so we gotta we gotta help this parent and pray with this parent to help get that to, to, to help them get control over their situation. Kind of like when I when I when um I you know when Jamal was learning how to drive, he's got his license now. Boy turned 17 years old today. Got, got, got his own truck now. But but when he was learning how to drive, there were some times to when I, I Trust him, but if it look like this thing is not, he's not gonna be able to overcorrect, or he's not gonna be able to correct this thing. I grab this thing, with it. and so okay, you just ain't break, all right? You just stop, and cause sometimes it, it takes that, and so and so and so you have a parent, and so you have a parent that's trying to get control, but you, you know that it's difficult for them, and sometimes you gotta help them, not. 
take over the control of their child, but help them and help them remain, keep patience and pray with them. And God can restore that control back and, re and, and restore those relationships. But it has we have to take it on a spiritual route when a parent has made those kind of mistakes early on and now they're trying to trying to do it. But 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 Joshua took personal responsibility and said, as for me and my house, and everybody in here needs to take responsibility over their house. I can't always I got you, I can't always control what my members do. But I control what my house do. And somebody might say, well, but he tell me he control his wife. You can say what you want to say. My house is my responsibility. All right? My wife and my children. That's my responsibility. Okay? And so in and, and the same way, I, and, I, and, and she controls me too. All right? It's our house is our responsibility. And we have to have our house under control. Everything can't happen in our house. Everybody can't come. You know, and you all know. You can bring your friends over, but y'all can sit out on the porch and talk. Everybody not this our house. We gotta make sure the right things, the right things go on in our house. We gotta control what's on the TV in our house. We gotta control my kid. When I raise my kid, you don't, you don't listen to any kind of music. You like rap music? I go buy you some Will Smith. You know, I go buy you some, you ain't listening to all this cursing and all this other kind of stuff. I control that. And we have to have control over our house because God trusted us with it. Those aren't our kids. Those are God's kids that he trusted us. That's not my wife. That's God's daughter that he trusted me with. You know, I, that, the way I, where I'm concerned, Michonne, I'm, I'm his son, and he trusted, he trusted her, you know, to, 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 um, to, a, to have a relationship and a marriage with me. In the end, it all belongs to God, but God gave us permission to be stewards over certain things. And uh, we have to take on that responsibility and not shun it. Yes, ma'am. What is your opinion on the children who call it HRS on their parents? Well, they can call them what they want to, but. Last, last week, my handyman uh, got into it with his son because the son was putting inappropriate things on Facebook. He was cursing, he was doing a lot of things he shouldn't do. So he took the, the phone from him and uh, got rid of Facebook or whatever. But they got into an altercation. He called the police on his phone. They arrested his father and uh, I read the paper and I said, oh, that's my handyman, what is he doing in jail? But let me, let me explain something to you. I think a couple things happen. Is, first of all, you got to have, now the world offers much pressure. The kids see, are influenced by all kinds of things. But if it's done right from the beginning, and I'm not saying 100%, but pretty close to 100%, if it's done right from the beginning, your kids won't even think about doing something like that. But, if they get to the point, and they do, or if some mistakes were made in that relationship, and they do something like that, you still got to fall on the word of God. And so, and, and, and you can't trust the world to raise your children because God's not going to hold the world responsible. God's going to hold you responsible for raising, for raising your child. Um, Creflo Dollar. He got in trouble for, for disciplining his child. I don't know the, 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 the details, but it's your house, and you're responsible for your house. And, and, and even, even law enforcement not going to make me, because essentially what I'm doing, if I allow my child to do something that, that's self-destructive, I'm literally allowing my child to walk, walk, walk in front of a bus. And so law enforcement or anything else is not going to force me to allow my child to kill him, him or herself. And so if law enforcement has to punish me, now there are ways that I, in everything I do, I still have to be a Christian and even how I discipline my child. I can't be out of control. When a parent loses control, when you discipline your child, you have to be under control. If you if you out of control, you need to go talk to God when you're disciplining your child. That's not Christian like you. You yelling and hollering and all that, you've lost your mind. 
you have to be under control so you don't do it. You've got to make sure you're listening to God and what you do and how you discipline your child. Um, and, but, but we have to always represent God in everything. And even how we discipline our children, we still have to be representative of God. We should never use, use foul language or even, you know, we got to be controlled on how we discipline our children. So we don't act like the very thing we're trying to act, teach them not to be. You know, and so and so, I, I think you still have the responsibility. It doesn't matter who it is, law enforcement, Pharaoh, uh, doesn't matter Nebuchadnezzar, doesn't matter who it is. I, we have a responsibility to protect our children and to put our children in a, in a position to be successful. Time and day. Uh, and then also, you know, it's about being friends. So I actually listen to your academics and my Thank you. 
even right now. He's 20 years old. He don't know what we're doing until he do something. It's done. Ain't going to be a fan about it. I'm still there. You feel like that? All right, all right. Um, it's like the um, HRS goes into a lot of homes, you know, because of various reasons. And it's like the system put it out there to the kids that the parents can't touch them, you know. And, and that, that strikes a big problem in spare a lot of for the child. You know, that it really does because with, even with the parents who have control, you know, when they discipline their kids, it, it sometimes throws them out of control when that child comes up against them with using the HRS, right. you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's like, you know, um, they know the way to go, they know what to do, and but the child got that in the back of their head and they use that towards their parents, um, that you can't hit me, you hit me and see what happened, you know, and stuff like that. But I know the day that I came up, my neighbor could knock me out. Okay. And my mama wouldn't say nothing, not but knock me out again. Yes, right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And it's, it's like, where's, where's the ethics? What, what happened yes. to the whole neighborhood raising a child? But I think, it, I think you start losing that when, you, when church is not important anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, that's see, true. The, the difference is, is that, is that, I mean, you can, you, you, there was a time when, 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 a spiritual relationship with God, a relationship with God, even if you were making mistakes, but this was this was still important. Mm -hmm. Church was still important. Right. Um, you 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 came there. I mean, you know, you older people talk about their experiences in Sunday school and things like that, right there. That's not a requirement anymore of of, of parent. You know, um, you know, we just happen to have good attendance at Bible study, but a lot of, a lot, a lot of churches you go to the Bible study. You know, you, you got two or three people. You know, um, you know, you, you, people aren't committed to this anymore. You you'll find people, you'll find people that you never used to have this right here. You'll find people. I remember when I was in college, and it blew my mind. One of my frat brothers that he had never been to church before. That blew my mind because when I came, when I was coming up in you know in the seventies, I mean, and this was eighty, this was this was the early eighties, but it blew my mind. And he had never been to church. I was like, what? You know, all our friends were like, church? You've never been to church? I mean, that's what we do. But now, it's a whole lot of people. You know, that was just one person that just blew our minds. But now, there are a whole lot of people. And I tell you, in our mentor programs, there are a whole lot of children that, that, that have never been to church, maybe for a funeral or something, but they don't just go like to church service and involved in the youth. Ministry and things like that. They they never do that kind of stuff. Um, and so I mean, that's, and so and so that's the world that we're dealing with now. And I think that's what we started to. And, and right here, when when they say fear the Lord, when he was telling the people in 14, he says, so fear the Lord wholeheartedly and put away forever the idols your ancestors worship when they live beyond the river Euphrates. Serve the Lord and the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, and then, then he goes on, you know, talk about. It. But his thing is, you have to have the type of reverence for God, and, and, and to, to where you are committed to making sure that you're in a place to where you can hear from God, even if you have some struggles that you're dealing with. I can remember my great grandfather. I'm not a great grandfather. My grandfather, he had a real bad drinking problem. But guess where he was on Sunday morning? He was in church and he smelled like he had a drinking problem. But he respected church and the community respected church to where that's where they came. And they and, but now you have a people, you have a whole society of people that that you know you it's surprising you would think that everybody has heard the name Jesus. But they haven't. Not everybody hears and have heard about, about Jesus. There's so many people that have not heard that name and that teaching. And we just kind of take it for granted, but there are a whole lot of people that, that just have not heard the teaching of the gospel, have not heard the message, um, that don't get that type of that type of upbringing, and um, and that's the world that we live in. And now our world is corrupt. You know, I, I you used to think, okay, a uh, a PG movie. You know, okay, PG is not bad. You know. But now a PG movie? Man, there's no telling what you're gonna see in a PG movie. You're gonna hear person, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna see some, some nudity. And so when you're talking about, you know, I don't know if Sadiq was in here. Um, but we took um, 
my family, Sonequa, and me, my wife, and, and Jamal, we went to see some movie. And, huh? I don't know what name, I can't remember what name was, but we went to see some movie and it said PG. And so I was like, PG, that's fine. And so we went to go see, I mean, it was crazy in there. I was sitting there, so actually my son looked over at me and said, Daddy, you didn't know it was going to be like this, did you? Because he know I would never put him in that situation, but when I looked at the rating, I thought that it was fine. But I got there, man, they got so much cursing and so much other stuff going on there. And, and he actually looked at me. And so they keep changing the rules and, and the stuff that, that used to not be a bad thing, you know, that now when they, when they keep stretching it out and stretching it out. And so what used to be pornography, you know, in the 80s, you know, it's barely rated R now, you know. And because the world has changed and if we assimilate, with this world right here, our values will change. And what should be what should be negative to us will actually be norm to us if we have just allow ourselves to assimilate. The Bible said we have to be separate from the world. And we have to we have to have core values that we get in in, in, in church teaching settings. But so many people aren't getting those. And so I mean anybody, any teachers in here, I know the old school teachers don't know about this. But any yeah, new teacher, Mr. Davis, Davis is a new teacher. The new teachers now, you know, you hear a little, when school started, we had to get on little kindergartners and first graders about cursing. You know, and say, hey, that's dumb, 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 what, what's going on? We had to, that was the kind of stuff we had to deal with when school first started. When, when we started in office, you had little kindergartners and first graders that know that talk with regular conversation using profanity. And that was the kind of stuff we had to deal with before we could even start dealing with the education piece. We had to get that kind of stuff under control. Because this is the world they live in, because they're not connected to the source um, the way with the way it used to be. And so he's telling them here, in order to do what I'm telling you to do, you're gonna have to separate yourself from all the things that you looked up to and that you connected to, and you're gonna have to fear God and serve him and him alone. But if you don't do it, guess who is going to do it? Me and my house. All right. Were there any more hands before we go to the next scripture? Yeah. When I was teaching, you have a, a child. You have to discipline all the time. You call the parents in, and the parent. I said, "That's your mom." The parent was like, "You had to discipline too." So the child was just like the parent. Right. So uh, remember, I didn't get a second thought. It's like generation, they just keep turning up. You have to break that cycle. You have to break that cycle and just keep going. It says in 16, somebody start reading from 16 through um, 18. So the people answered and said, For it be for us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other God. For the Lord our God, our God is He who brought us and our fathers about the land of Egypt from the house of God. Who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went among all the people who came to the past? And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, including the Amorites, who dwelt in the land. We also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. What is that saying? But there are people like, hey, you know, we, 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 you know, we, we understand you know, who we were serving before, but you know, we don't see what they don't think, they don't think, no, we don't see what you, you don't go out of land, you don't go out of bonds, you don't go us from a place that, 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 we were, you know, in change, you know, we don't, you don't, you don't gave us stuff that we didn't even deserve, so, so, you know, as far as we can see, we're going to serve the Lord too, for he, so, so not only is he your God, he's not God too, but we're going to see with our own eyesight that what he has done for us, so, that's what I got, they, they say, hey, I know I used to do this, I know I to serve this, but hey, you're going to came along and you're going to show me this, you're going to dig this for me, and hey, I understand. So, so uh, I'm with you, I'm, I'm going to serve you too. So, so that sounds sound like a good deal, and we, we, we just a good deal. Yeah, it, it, it killed me, you know, doing Black History Month. You have everybody just motivated and excited to be better, be more productive. Just be wiser. 
Then before February over with, back down in the same old mess, not pursuing achievement, same thing over. Sometimes we get excited, but you can't progress off emotions. You progress off commitment. And so they're saying, they're saying here, God, I'm saying this is what you got to do. You got to be committed to God. You got to let go of the gods of your ancestors. I know some of your ancestors went wayward. You know, and, 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 and that's where we are now. You know, there was some wayward. This didn't just happen. This, <laughs> well, well, the, the world we're living in didn't just, just happen. This, this built up from, 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 from some stuff. The, the generation that we point the fact at, they're not the one that made the mistake. <coughs> it, it, it's the folk that came before them that that made some bad choices, that were not committed to God, that made the mistakes. And uh, and so he's basically saying, this is what you're going to have to do. You can't continue to do what you, what the people that came before you did. And then so they say, hey, just like I said, this sounds like a good deal. We know where we come from. We can make a commitment. We can we can commit to God. We can we can serve God. He's done a lot for us. He bought us out of Egypt, bought us out of slavery. We, we can serve God. Uh, but Moses, I think he had a good understanding. Okay, Moses had a good understanding that, you know what, right now he might be talking out of emotion. And so Moses asked him, well, Moses made, went ahead and said something else in 19 and 20. What did he say in 19 and 20? Not Moses, Joshua. Then Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy and just God. He will not forgive you due your rebellion and sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve other gods, so even though they're saying we're gonna do it, we're excited, we're gonna hold, we're gonna be faithful to God. What was, 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 was Joshua a little veteran? He's been around for a while. What was Joshua's reply? What they replied with all that that, that emotion? What what was Joshua's reply? Uh, no, no, no. You can't do it. Talk. You 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 yeah, you know when folk throwing game at you. You, you know, George. You know, it, 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 it's, it's like what we okay. You know, uh, you're going to find inside the Bible how many times God find them that they came <laughs> for them and how he got out of Egypt. We ourselves do the same thing. We don't remember how God took care of our needs when we were down. We, didn't, we were in debt and he found money. You know, we sometimes don't remember who we who where we are before we knew God. And this is the same thing. He's trying to let you know that uh, he knows who you are, he knows what you were, and he wants to continue to serve and be committed. Not emotionally, but to be committed all to us. And, and, and every time uh, they are committed to them, they always succeed. They always succeed. I think, you know, because of what we live in now, especially as, I, I don't mean it as, as Christians, we live in that we have to go for me. So I think uh, a lot of times it's like, you know, you know what God will do. You know how he's going to bless you. But now you're in a situation right now. And God ain't responded like he wanted him to respond. So you tend to forget. You tend to forget and have amnesia. So you go on to something else. You go on to that, that, that devil talking to you or that other God that talking to you saying, oh, yeah, well, your God is, but I can do this for you right now. You know, so so then when, when, when he comes back and, show, and he comes, and after you don't got in trouble with him, then he comes right back. The first thing you do after you don't got in trouble, you call right back on him. Oh God, I'm with you now. I know you with him because you know what he can do for you. So you mean you just run in your mind because you want him to go in the same thing. So so that that that's what kind of you know that thing, you know, kind of world we in that. That's what you know for lately, you know, you know, we want something up right now. Can you equate the day's guns control and their talk that we have in our bed? I don't know. I, I think people just use that kind of stuff for politics. Uh, 
that. I have my opinion, but of course I don't think I know everything in the world. Um, I think when it all boils down to it, I think you ought to have regulations, but I think when it all boils down to it, you got to have a little more teaching too. Um, I was thinking about, you know, every time they have a mass shooting, and we all make it laws and everything, and then as time goes on, it wanes away. Yeah, nobody talks about it. That, that's somebody the answer. Somebody kills some honorable people, and here we are again. Yeah, that, that, that's the answer. Yeah. Um, Linda? Uh, like Ty and, and uh, George was saying, I think those we as people, we got to get back to seeing the heart of God and not just the hand of God. Because the relationship with God, it ain't just about what God can do, but what God can do, and the money, and this and that. God will put you in a situation where all the money in the world ain't going to be nothing for you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's going to be that relationship that you have with God that's going to see you through that time. Because you know all the money in the world can't be in it. It's going to be a lot of money in the world. But as I like you crying, you don't know where you're going to be the next day. It ain't got nothing to do with it. It's that relationship. It's that relationship. It's being able to, when you find that night, like, you find out like God with your husband, your wife, you see that God will see you. That thing that you're going through, and that's what, and, and I'm gonna tell you something. And the depth of what you're going through, the deeper whatever that is that you're going through, the closer it's gonna draw you to God. And that's the deeper, you know. And I'm not, not you know, making anything surface, but the deeper that you dug down in there, the deeper you gonna see God. You so far down in there, and so and and then when that situation is cleared up and over with. Because the scar so deep, the scar that it left is so deep. Not that you move by it, but it's that thorn. You know that thorn that stayed with you as a reminder? You got that reminder. You got that reminder. So you can't forget. Because every day when you wake up from something, every night, and if you turn over wrong, you feel it. You can't forget. You can't never forget for the rest of your life. And that's what it took for God to get your attention, and that's what it is. But we got to stop seeking the hand of God and stop, and stop looking for the heart of God and trying to get there on the inside and that personal relationship with God. Because that's the true change of God. And, and, and see, Joshua was wise. See, Joshua was not just accepting, yeah, we're going to do it, we're going, we're ready. Joshua was making them really look in the mirror. He said, now God requires this. God is jealous. You know, and this is the result. This is what happens when you rebel against God. Are you, are you sure this is what you want to do? Or are you not? No? Because sometimes we can be, like even with, with ministry, sometimes you can just be so happy for, church, for people to join the church and get saved that you don't think, say, you don't put things out, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. You say, well, if I make them do all this, then they're going to leave. You know, and, and you it's, it's like you don't put any kind of conditions. This is required, but this is required because you're so 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 afraid that they're just going. And so you just rather let them sit in there. You just rather just have them on the roll than have them get rooted. You know, and, and, and do things to, to 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 earn. You know, not not that you earning your salvation, but they are required. And people need to understand that when you get. I had a conversation yesterday with another preacher. And we got on topic, well, I think out there he's not talking about it, um, about salvation and and um and and that you know not being able to once you say you always say, but that's a done deal. Well y'all know my opinion on that. You know, I think your righteousness defines your relationship with God. If you choose to live an unrighteous life, you you have separated yourself from God. And so he went through this whole thing and, and so I, I and so once he went through it, what's your opinion? I said, well, Doc, I think differently, but I respect everybody's thoughts. I really don't want to get into the debate if you don't mind. Um, um, but I do think differently. And uh, no, I just like to hear your opinion. I said, well, I'll share it just to share it, but I don't, I don't want to get into a debate. And, um, and I said, you know, um, um, God, there, there are requirements on our side. God is not just pleased and not, not just going to give us all of this because we signed the paper one day. You know, there are requirements, and I said, I said, now Paul said that he keeps his body under subjection, meaning he keeps himself under control, 
So he said, I keep my body, I bring my body in subjection so that I myself might not be a castaway after I preach to others. Meaning that he understands that if he doesn't, if he doesn't uh, maintain his relationship with Christ, that he can lead all these people to God and then not, and then be separated himself. You know, and and, and, uh, and so I say that th this relationship thing can be can be um can be separated or severed through sin. That's why you have to go through a repentance process and say, God, I'm sorry or forgive me, so that He restores the relationship. Because the sin, separate, the, the sin, the, the sin messes up that relationship. But you say, God, I'm sorry, forgive me, and the relationship is restored. That's the whole reason for the repentance. And uh, and, and because a lot of people just think that God does not require, He does not have expectations. And so here, He's saying, God is jealous. He's jealous of other gods. When you have other gods that you put before God, when he's telling you, I need you to let this God go, whatever the God may be, and you're saying, no, I can't let him go, God. He's jealous. He's a jealous God. And when we're rebellious, then we're, we're, we, we, we're destroyed for our rebellion. And, and, um, and, so, and so Joshua is trying to make sure the people understand this is about more than an emotional statement or declaration right now. Are you sure... And this is what I said, I don't think you can do it. Because God is jealous. And when, we, when you're rebellious, that, that he literally said he won't forgive. We're in the New Testament now to where he will forgive. But Joshua was really literally saying that he won't forgive. You're going to have to pay for your sin. Because during this time, the scripture said the wages of sin is death. Point blank. There was no Jesus. And so the wages of sin was death. There was no right of forgiveness. They offered goats of blood, goats and bulls and lamb, but that only lasted for a year. You have to keep going back and doing that, and so, and so he's saying, he's saying here, he, he's saying, he, he, Joshua, said, are you sure that this is what you want to do? In verse twenty-one, it says, but the people answered Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. You are a witness to your own decision. Joshua said, You said it, and you heard yourself say it. You have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, they replied. We are witnesses to what we have said. And then, all right, then Joshua said, since you're going to do this, this is what you have to do. See that? We have to do something. And he said, you have to destroy the idols, everything that gets in the way of your vision of God. That's what an idol is. It blocks you from God, from seeing God. You're dependent upon this thing. He said, now you have to destroy your <laughs> idols so that you can be clearly focused on God. Destroy the idols among you and turn your hearts to God, to, to the Lord your God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God, we will obey Him alone. And then it talks about the cut. But to that point, Joshua told the people, you have to do something. You gotta make a sacrifice. The only reason we can have a relationship with Christ is because, oh, with God, is because a sacrifice was made. That's the only reason that we're able to have a relationship with God. A sacrifice that was made, a sacrifice was made, and so and so that separation that, that where we weren't able to unite with God because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Now through faith in Him, now we can we, a relationship can be restored. And, and 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 the same thing with God. For for us to have a true relationship with God, one. The sacrifice that Jesus made, but then we're going to have to make some sacrifices. There's some things that are in our lives that separated us from God. We're going to have to sacrifice those things so that we can be united with God. And so if there's some things that we were doing that separate, we got to sacrifice and turn those things loose. Because if we keep holding on to those things, says he's a jealous God. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I'm relating that to my walk with Christ right now um, because I, I had other idols and blocking me from the word of God. Uh, I guess I would just see my selfish uh, program on my selfish ways and, and it was stopping me from giving the blessing that God had for me. So therefore uh, I'm going to uh, say to the word of God uh, this uh, that's why I was giving my blessing because I was going to be sure. But I don't mind sucking 
other than God. I think anytime we're able to be successful at convincing someone to trust Jesus, don't leave it at that. Make sure they understand that this is important. There's some things you're gonna have to give up. There's some things that you're gonna you can't leave this point and live the same way you were living before. And we, and we have to be serious and have those kind of conversations because if we don't have those conversations and really enlighten them that a change has to take place, you know, or, or refocus it, it has to take place. If, if we don't, if we're not honest with them and let them know that it's not just a statement and then life is peaches and cream. No, life is about to get a little difficult. You just did something that your worst enemy does not want you to do. And so I have to be realistic with you about the things that you're going to have to do right now. The things that can make this you, you more successful at what you're trying to do. And so, and, 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 but after Joshua did all that, they said, you, we, Joshua, we, 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 we're with you. We're going to do this right here. And it says that Joshua made a covenant with them. I don't know where I'm at, but I know it said Joshua made a covenant. Where? 25. It says, so Joshua made a covenant with the people that same day as Shechem, committed them to follow the decrees and regulations of the Lord. Joshua recorded these writings in the book of God's instructions as a reminder of their grief. He took a huge stone and rolled it beneath the terebinth tree beside the tabernacle of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, this stone has heard everything the Lord said to us. It will be a witness to testify against you if you go back on your word to God. Then Joshua said, all the people away to their own land. Don't make the stones. Don't make the stones testify against you. You're not the only one that heard it. Something else heard you make that commitment to God. And God is expecting you to follow through on that commitment. And if you don't, there's even one scripture that talked about an even worse punishment for them that, that actually knew the way and then turned away. You know, they war woe to them, you know, that, that, that actually knew the way and turned away. And so, you know, and, and so we have, when we make that commitment to God, uh, they're, they're, it's not hard. Nothing's hard about it, but adjustments do have to be made. You know, just like in a, in, in a, in a diet, you know, you, you, you saw that, wow, I'm about to kill myself the way I'm eating. Judith, I didn't get a chance to look at it. I was driving down the road, so I didn't get a chance to see what you sent me. But, but, uh, but you say, you know, you go to the doctor and find out that, that something's going on and you're about to kill yourself. you got to adjust your diet. Well, yeah, it is going to be hard, you know, but it's not impossible. You just have to figure out what do I have to do and then make a commitment to do it. And so serving God, I'm not going to say it's not, it's not going to be challenging. There are challenges because there's some things that you fell in love with doing. Sin, sin, sin was fun and y'all might not want to admit it. But that's why you were stuck in it because it was fun. I, I literally enjoyed being a sinner until I found out where I was headed. And then I just had to make a decision. I'm not going to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season and then miss out on the things of God forever. And so I have to be honest with you, I can't lie to myself and I like saying what fun. It was fun. But I, I, fun, I'm not going to let fun kill me. I got to be committed enough to say, you know what, and disciplined enough to say, I'm not going to let fun kill me.